for this? Yeah. So it turns out that today is day 50 of working on this thing, which is a nice even number for the day that we try to start it. Lucas came up to our shop today to help out with the last of the wiring, and Casey will be here soon to help with the tuning, and then we're gonna try to start it. Also today, we're doing our first giveaway. One of you guys is gonna get a Rogue Fab Bender just like this one, but with a custom Grind Hard graphics on it. So that's pretty awesome. And uh, also, we're launching a new line of merch. We've got these shirts, sweet new logo on the front, and on the back, a list of a ton of towns and countries that you guys are from. You sent us these, we, uh, we put them on here. And obviously, these hats, all of which are made as locally as possible, printed right here in North Idaho. Um, and we have air fresheners, dark ice air fresheners. There's one uh, over there in the Triumph, hanging in the window. So for the next month, every $5 you spend on merch gets you an entry to win this bender. Uh, full details are on the site. But first, let's get this thing running. First step is um, wiring up the stuff that we didn't have before, like the igniter and um, rerouting some of these other wires and stuff and getting it all tidied up. Well, I think we got things set up a little bit better this time. We've got it hooked up. We've got the real spark plug wire on it, so it's much easier to get my timing light on it. We've got spark on a huge gap on this uh, spark tester I've got here. Um, so that's a good thing, that's uh, about three times the gap it's actually gonna be working. So if it'll jump that, we've got lots of power. We got a good spark there, and you can see it there in the spark tester. That's got a huge gap that it's jumping. Uh, we made a mark on our cam gear here, and we're going to check and make sure that our timing um, is set correctly on the computer so that it knows when top dead center is. Um, and then that's gonna be our base, and we can do our tuning from there, so. Yeah, this time we're gonna make it work. But Ethan was telling me about this uh, choke that was on this, and I was trying to wrap my head around why there's a choke on a fuel-injected bike. And, well, after seeing the video of him taking it apart, taking the choke plates, choke plates, it is technically a choke plate, <laughs> out, out of the throttle body, it had occurred to me that this bike came with traction control. I believe it was one of the first adventure bikes that uh, KTM had with traction control. But the problem is this uses a throttle cable to run the throttle and they had to shut it down some way to make the traction control work and your options are either cut the spark which would be pretty harsh cut the fuel which would also be pretty harsh or do what they did here and this is a set of throttle plates that essentially just closes off the throttle body so it makes it a lot more smooth anyway we deleted all that don't need it don't need it no traction control <laughs> we got plenty of traction we want to be able to do drifts yes and donuts. we don't want control outs <laughs> please So what we want is we want the mark to be about even with this surface of the um, this gasket surface here is where we were um, going off of. So uh, we need to change our timing. Um, just kind of a ballpark guess, 180 degrees out. Wow, that's basically perfect. Really close to that. It's just a little bit high. Let's uh, add another degree. It. That went up, didn't it? So we have good spark, and we have it all set and timed with the computer, uh, but we're not getting a lot of oil flow, so we want to make sure we have oil pressure and flow through the engine before, uh, before we try to start it. So that's what we're working on right now, is figuring out why we don't have much oil flow. Um, we do have the tank all hooked up here, or filled up, let me see. There's no pressure or... Nothing, huh? Right now we're just calibrating the sensors to get it better uh, so, that, so that they know what temperature stuff is. So Casey fortunately yeah, so. brought his little laser thermometer thingy so we can read the temperature on 
the sensors so we know exactly what temperature they are and then calibrate them in the computer so that the computer is reading the right temperature from the um, voltage that it's getting from these. And the sensor is, according to Casey's laser thermometer. Like we're at 59. Ha ha. Ha <laughs> Man, this thing is so tunable. And then I can tell that that it that 3.68 volts is, what did we say, 59 degrees? 59, yeah. 59 degrees. And then now it'll read. Should be reading correctly. It should read, yep, yeah, 59 degrees. On the so <laughs> we can, that's only set at one temperature. We don't know exactly if it's yeah. gonna read linearly. So once the engine's warmer, we can read the temperature again and calibrate it for that exact voltage. So this is our uh, our target air fuel ratio map and this is actually reading in what's called lambda. And um, so we've got our engine speed here and we've got our manifold pressure here. This is measured in uh, kilopascals currently. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I kind of like using that myself, something I'm used to uh, using with the tuning I've been doing. So essentially kilopascals, we're reading from zero to, well, this goes up to 301. Um, zero would be like an absolute vacuum, which you'll never achieve inside the motor, but uh, um, so typically like idling, it'll be around 35 kilopascals or so. Um, varies a little bit from one load to the next, and uh, 100 would be like at sea level, um, would be our ambient air pressure. Um, anything above that would be like boost pressure then. Ooh, so boost pressure. Yeah, this thing is like, it's set for that. Yeah, which is <laughs> it's ready awesome. to go. That 1.0 would be what's called your stoichiometric air, for, air fuel ratio. Um, so with gasoline, um, regular gasoline would be 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of playing around there. So ultimately, most of what we're gonna be tuning though is our base fuel map, which also reads in the same um, idle, uh, the engine speed and the manifold pressure. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things we're gonna be doing, but ultimately this is where everything starts. And then all the other things that we're gonna be tuning are, um, are gonna be modifying these, this number ultimately. Um, so it'll take into consideration whatever sensors we've got on it. So our coolant temperature, if there's an engine temperature sensor, our air temperature sensor, all that stuff will make small modifications to the, our base number here and we'll end up with um, effectively our pulse width on the injection time. So, um, which when I refer to that, it's how long the injector is open. The injector is either on or off and uh, it's just how long it holds that injector open, how much fuel it gives it. So. We're going to do a lot of playing around. Unfortunately, we don't have a dyno, so it's going to be kind of a lot of by feel. Um, but we should be able to get it run pretty good, I think, though. So The last thing we need to set up here before we test start is fuel. So we have the fuel pump. We have our uh, external temporary tank. We just need to um, run the fuel pump and adjust the pressure regulator to get around 51 PSI or so. That's what um, I read on the internet. Always trust the internet. <laughs> With the ECU uh, set up the way it is and the fuel pump, it only runs the fuel pump when you're cranking. So I'm cranking it over and then watching the fuel pressure gauge here. <laughs> Which I've got it turned down to about 60. That's somewhere between 50 and 60. This gauge isn't that accurate. We'll just leave it there for starters. You see? Something I just noticed, it's actually got a little target here that tells you where the engine is actively on the map. So this little circle here, Ethan, push the starter button real quick. As it moves, it's telling you that the engine speed's coming up and the manifold pressure is changing. So that's really cool. That's going to make it so much easier to tune because it's telling me where it's at right this second and I can change that cell right this second. So that's pretty awesome. Most of the tuning I've done doesn't have that. So. I kind of have to look at one map and you know see where all the numbers are and go back and make the changes and then go hunt for it again. This is really awesome. It's just right there. So yeah, that's going to make it so much easier. Okay, are we ready for this? <laughs> Should we see if it starts? I think so. Let's see if it goes bang. Is this the moment of truth? It is the moment of truth. Should well, I stand the back? first moment. <laughs> It also just did something. Maybe it just okay. didn't have enough air. Ethan, are your hands shaking out of excitement or coffee? Uh, that'd be excitement. <laughs> Good. Are you sure it's not supposed to do that? The coil is uncoiled. 
Yeah. What the heck? <coughs> For some reason it uh, it fried this coil. And not the other one. Not the other one, no. Mm, I imagine we must have a setting off on the computer or something. It shouldn't run hot. I mean, they might get a little bit warm when they're turned on, but they shouldn't run that hot, though, well, obviously. <laughs> we can run it on one cylinder. You got another coil around? <laughs> Wait, any, yes, any I do. Coil? Yes, I have four of them on the Triumph. They're almost identical. The coil's a coil, really. Let's go. This is a Robin Hood moment. Robin. Steal from the running, give to the weak. Yeah, well, we can order coils, just we can't get them here today, so. The clips might even be the same. I'm just gonna steal two of these, just so we have them. We can run two of the same. All right, look at that. We'll see if they fit, but they look almost exactly the same. Hot dog. I just need yep, they fit, 100%. Sweet. Yes. We had one of the settings on the computer, because we're idiots and didn't read all the way through the instructions. We read all these like, you know, red warning things, but here also it says what to set one of the settings at here. It's not in the warning, it's just like what to set it at. And we had set that set to the opposite thing. We got some pretty uh, promising activity out of it, so let's see what it does this time. Oh. That's not running. running amazing, but it's running. <laughs> we ready for this? Yeah. Let's see what we get this time. cylinder ultimately so um, we were able to get that reset and it pretty much just fired right up once I got that set um, it was super rich when I started but I was able to kind of get that adjusted just as, as I was adjusting you just hear it just running way way better so it's it's really awesome that you can do a live tune on this and uh, see changes like immediately so um, a lot of tuning systems that I use you have to make changes and start you know do a download start it up try it again make changes so Anyways, uh, yeah, this is really awesome. You can just do it on the fly. Uh, the manifold pressure sensor is not reading correctly. Um, it's staying up around 100, 100 kilopascals, which idling it should be down about 35 or so. Um, it, there should be um, lower air pressure, and it's showing real high air pressure right now. So I'm not sure what we've got going on. Um, we need to check that out to get this thing to run really good when we actually go to ride it. So. Um, but we are making huge progress, though. This is sounding awesome, so... Yeah, it runs! <laughs> it runs great! Yeah. I would say it runs better than anything else we've ever started for the first time. The first time it starts. Which is awesome, because yeah. we just bought this engine in a crate from eBay. Yeah, this is also the only engine we've ever used that didn't run before we used it. The original map sensors on this bike were reading off of these fittings. And there's one, one here, and then one on the front side of this cylinder. So, but we weren't using those fittings, we were using the opposite ones just because there was hoses already hooked up to it with a T-fitting. Well, those had teeny tiny restrictors, so it wouldn't have been reading. That's why Casey said the map sensor was still reading basically atmospheric because it wasn't getting any flow through that itty bitty hole. That's loud, yes. <laughs> plan is I'm going to hook up the clutch real quick, this hydraulic clutch, so that we can put it in gear and make it go vroom vroom. First powertrain test. That's a fast idle. 
All yeah. systems are working. Yes. All the systems that exist, that is. There's a lot to help. <laughs> <laughs> Brakes are not optional. Uh, well, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> the clutch yeah. is currently in a rather difficult to reach uh, place, but you know, it works for test. It was so cool seeing purposes. all the drive shafts going and yeah, this all I love seeing that drive shaft man. spin there. It's awesome. We have reverse wired in and it's not what you'd think. <laughs> I think we're ready to test it out. I think so. All right. Ready for reverse? And... Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fast reverse. Oh man. I'm so happy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, so hold up. Right now we got reverse. And now we have forward. <laughs> might be able to track down different gears for this chain case. We might be able to get some difference there. Other than that, it's uh, changing the tire size. It's go fast, bud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Sacrifice top end if you change it up. Yeah, but sacrifice the 100 plus mile an hour top end. <laughs> so if you give but up 100 and only do like 90, then you might be able to do two instead of four. But see, 100 miles an hour currently is at max power, not max RPM. That the, way, the gearing the way it is, 100 miles an hour is at 8,500 RPMs, which is peak power. So you could rev it, rev it to 95 and go faster. It's just that's peak power is at 101 miles an hour. I think it's a bad idea. It's just what, honestly, <laughs> like I was, I wanted 100 miles an hour, but I also just went with what we had. Like these are 4.3 to one diffs. This is a 2.36 or 1.6, I forget, increase. So you add those together, tire size, engine RPMs, final drive ratios in the engine, or in the transmission, and it all works out to be in sixth gear at 8,500 RPMs. But that's slower than the bike was. The bike was uh, 135, 138 at 8,500 RPMs. That, I mean, that's just what the gearing calculators. I'd still rather go that fast on the bike. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it would be safer. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for supporting this build to a point where we could get it running. We are so stoked. We'll be building the hand controls next week and then, I mean, we should be test driving. So really exciting times here. And if you wanna check out the giveaway to get yourself a brand new Rogue Fab Bender, all the details are in the link below. We also have a new sticker meant to match the Hurricane, which is really cool on our site as well. And when we dropped the beanies in this same logo, they sold out in like two days and we ordered the same amount as we did beanies. So you might wanna get on that quick. So thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel, guys. You're the best. We'll see you next week.